the previous algorithm so that is the algorithm on the rightmost blackboard the input was R and Q there so I apply it to A and little r uh, pardon me p it should be prime that is the prime that we are dealing with so that replaces a by an a that is maximal at p that satisfies the property at the far lower right and what you also do is remove all factors P from R. So now the small prime factors are gone. In particular, the current R satisfies this last implication. So just to add some comment, now we have for all uh, for all P that divide Q and prime and no more than the degree for all those P we have that P does not divide the index of A in OK anymore so the small primes they have been completely normalized there is no fear that we will ever encounter here a small p anymore the a will of course only be growing in the algorithm so that is the first stage in the algorithm and it is maybe of interest to mention that in the example on quadratic fields this is all that the algorithm does the second stage that I am about to explain in the quadratic case nothing will happen to A and nothing will happen to R it's really in the quadratic case only this, the prime number 2 that is requiring work so in this second stage we have to be a bit more careful that is happening here so we first compute a dagger so a that is my current a and this a dagger I think I defined it at one point but the definition is gone so you can check that in your notes and you also compute this finite abelian group you can do that using the algorithms for finely degenerated abelian groups and you compute its R torsion and that R torsion is explicitly given by a dagger intersected with 1 over R times A modulo A and that may remind you of something that you saw before let me just quickly write it down you saw before well with an R instead of A you saw this thing and that was the nil radical of the ring R mod PR and you see that these things are really the same if I take R equal to A and I take R, capital R equal to A and little r equal to P then you see that these two groups are isomorphic because you just have to divide by P everywhere so this is where we are really using this trace radical appearing in the proposition that used to be on the leftmost blackboard okay 
So here we have a finite abelian group that we can compute. And to this finite abelian group, we apply the projectivity algorithm. Apply the algorithm from this fact to H equal that finite abelian group that you just computed. And if you have done so, then you are given a number D, so that gives D dividing the exponent of H, D divide the exponent of H. It is also divisible by all prime factors of that exponent, but the exponent of H is certainly at most R. It divides R because the whole group is killed by R. And what you do now is that we replace uh, R by D. So if H is not already projective, then we will certainly reduce R here. R is getting smaller. And now what we do is that we compute, we go back to this group, A dagger intersected with 1 over R A. And it is a sad fact that you have to recompute it because you have changed R. But it is a subgroup of the previous one, if you mod out by A, so it will not be too much additional work. And then this is an, a fractional A ideal, and now we don't do what uh, we did here, this multiplier ring, because we don't know that things are square free, but we blow it up. And this blow up we call B. And once it is blown up, we have a better ring. Well, except if it is the same, of course. So if B is equal to A, then we are done. We terminate. And then, of course, there is some work to be done, namely that B, well, the new, the, the A, which is equal to B, that it satisfies all these wonderful conditions. And if B is not A, then again, because it is this blow up, it will be bigger than A. Then what we do is that we replace A by B, so that is our new A, and go back to the beginning of my second stage, which is over here. So that is the entire algorithm. And well, many comments are required, but maybe there are questions. Yeah? How do I compute? Uh, so if you have a finite abelian group, this A dagger mod A, uh, and you, then you can write it like this, and that reduces computing the R torsion to a cyclic group, and then you do it by certain GCDs and stuff. Yeah? Other questions? Okay. Now let me... Five extra minutes, ah, great. Uh, so let me tell you what you have to do now, namely prove this theorem. 
And if you sit down and you want to prove this theorem, then it turns out that when you have primes that divide R only once, then everything is going as it should, and there will be the prime will not be in the index. So the implication in this arrow from left to right, that is taken care of by what I told you already. And in fact, everything else is also clear with one very big exception, and that is this arrow backwards. If there is a hidden square in my R, then really those primes are creating trouble. And let me not give you all details of that proof, but let me tell you what the general logic of that proof is, and that logic is as follows, that at the end, of the algorithm, this A and this R have a few good properties, and the first is that this a dagger modulo A. Yeah, so square bracket R. Uh, yeah, the, that will be is projective over Z mod R Z and what well, is essentially the same group, but uh, lifted back to characteristic zero, so that is this group. This group, because the blow up is equal to A, that implies, or that is equivalent actually, to this group being invertible. And these two, and then of course also I should mention that you have this important property that P, that R is only divisible by big primes, primes bigger than the degree. And these three properties, the projectivity and the invertibility and the fact that there are no small primes yet left, they enable you to write down a very precise structure theorem for what the ring A looks like if you complete it at a prime lying over a prime number dividing R. And the structure of this ring is very reminiscent of the structure of tamely ramified extensions of ZP. You first have a, an unramified piece and then you draw the, the, then you take a root, you adjoin a root not of a prime element but of a unit times that number R which need not be a prime locally. And from that explicit description of what this complete local ring looks like, you simply keep your eyes open and you deduce that this arrow must be valid. You can write down bigger rings inside the same algebra over Q if P square divides R. But instead of going into these technicalities, I would like to tell you about another special case in the few minutes that are left in which the algorithm behaves in a way that is very similar to the way it behaves in the quadratic case that I mentioned to you. So that is the following situation. I take F in Zx 
harmonic and irreducible, let's say of degree d, let's take it greater than 1, so think of the x squared minus a. And r is z alpha, with f alpha is 0, so that is zx modulo f. And you assume that if I mod out by the ideal generated by f prime of alpha, f prime being the derivative, this is essentially the same as r dagger modulo r. Assume that this, well, I view it as an abelian group, has an element of order equal, so the order of this group is the discriminant of f in absolute value. And I like there to be an element of order equal to the largest divisor of that order, of the discriminant, co-prime to all primes that are at most the degree. And then the fact is that just as in the quadratic case, the algorithm stops after the first stage, it turns out, oh, I forgot to say what Q is, so I take Q, let's say the discriminant in absolute value. Then it turns out that this group is simply cyclic and that you take d equal to r and b is also equal to a, nothing is happening in the algorithm and then you discover that the output a is gotten simply by only normalizing the primes up to d. So that is the intersection of ok with the ring that you get by allowing denominators that are at most p. So that generalizes what I told you about x squared minus a. Okay, so that was my lecture for today, and I thank you for your attention, but maybe there are questions. So the lectures tomorrow and on Friday, they will not use this material that is supposed to have independent interest. Okay, thank you.